Welcome to the discussion part of chap book three, chapter what 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 was this seven, seven or eight? What was this? Oh, eight episode eight, the puppet master. Oh my god, man. Oh my. Yo, I'm a little mind blown right now. To be honest with you, I'm mind blown. I mean, good beginning of the of the episode, right? The whole Avatar crew's in the middle of a damn forest at night with a fire, telling some old classic Southern Water Tribe scary stories, which I, I love that thing. I love that they would just tell stories about each other's cultures, some little scary stories to um, scare them. Obviously, Sokka didn't accomplish that, but Katara started telling her story of her mom seeing her dead friend or something or seeing uh, the White Walker and... Yeah, and all of a sudden, this old lady comes out, who we learn is Hama, from the Southern Water Tribe herself, and um, and yeah, she just appears to them. She acts all nice and stuff like that, but there's creepy music the whole time she's around, right? And I mean, obviously, one of the first things you notice is the damn sharp ass nails that she has, which makes sense why they would call her a witch. I mean, sh- I mean, goddamn boy, this is just like Scooby Doo. Exactly how the witches look like in Scooby Doo, man. Oh my god. But yeah, the story keeps on going. Um, the whole town and village thinks it's like an, a spirit of some kind, which is why I guess Aang could have helped in that situation, right? He's the connection between the spirit world and the real living world. But then they started going through Hama's stuff through her house. They find puppets, literal puppets. So she's a puppet master. Which is a hint because those puppets are the people in the mountain themselves. Because one of the one I said that does he look like Uncle Iroh or not? He was actually in the cave right there with the same beard and everything. So those were hinting that they were, those were the people within the mountain that Toph heard in the very beginning of the episode. She heard them. Well, I don't know about hearing them. She could probably sense them through the earth, right? Because she can sense movement. I guess she can sense. That far away from the mountain. I don't know how far away they were from the mountain. But I guess Toph felt it. She was telling the truth. There was something in there. And um, But yeah. Then, then we learned that she's from the Southern Water Tribe. She was there. She got captured by the Fire Nation. Um, There was a little. There was a woman there. When she was captured. And she was looking down. That looked like Katara's mom. Maybe. She had the little hair loopies. I I don't know, maybe the hair loopies passed out generation to generation. I don't know, but... Oh, man. If that was Katara's mom. That's sick. Our first look at Katara's mom. Um, but, yeah. She was captured. And then, you know, Hama starts teaching... I mean, she shows them that she's a waterbender with soup. Taking the soup to them. And then she starts teaching Katara. Ends up going, going talking to her. Shows, her. shows her that you can take water out of thin air. Which, I mean... It makes sense. Oxygen. Wait, why, why did... During the reaction, why the fuck did I say H2O? That's for water. Not for air. <laughs> oh, shit. I just realized that. Whatever, fuck it. Um, but, uh... But, yeah. She took water out of thin air. Which is... Cool. I don't know how she did it, but... Uh, yeah, there's motion in the air, so... It should be possible. Um... But that's cool. That's cool to learn. That's cool for Katana to learn. Because, I mean, like she was saying, there's some instances when she was in the desert where she couldn't have any water. She needed ink to go all the way up to the cloud and collect water where they were still looking for Appa. And, um, yeah, she starts teaching her that. And starts doing the little move with the flowers, taking the moisture and the water from them. And she's able to bend with just the, the flowers. And, and during their fight, we saw with the tree also. So she starts teaching all of that, and the rest of the Avatar crew starts realizing, okay, there's something fishy going on. They go and talk to Old Man Ding, I think that was his name, or Old Man Dim. I think it's Old Man Ding, but they go and talk to him, and he pretty much just tells him, yo, it's not a spirit. It's like something was controlling over me, right, possessing me. Um, and, I mean, that was the other hint, right, for the bloodbending, because Hama said... You could only bloodbend during the full moon. So it would make sense that, like Old Man Ding said, once the sun rose, he 
he got freed, right? Because Hama couldn't do the blood bending anymore, so that's why he escaped. Um, and that was the first hint that also that she was the one doing it because the full moon is only for water benders, so it, it all started making sense. They started piecing all the pieces together. They went to the mountain, ended up finding the people. Uh, and they started talking about the witch, the people in the cave started talking about, and they knew it was Hama. And then we go to Katara and Hama in the middle of the forest, and she starts telling her how she was able to escape from prison, right, with the rats, practicing on the rats first and then on the guards to let her out, which, oh my, I just hate that noise that they did. Like, it's kind of like the Star Wars noise when they do like a force choke. Oh, damn. But yeah, man, they introduced blood bending. That is so crazy, man, but it makes so much sense. Because we're made up of what? 70% water or something, right? Like that's the stat, we're made up of 70% water. So it makes sense that you could, you could water bend someone. Oh my God, man, that, that's so fucking scary. That's so scary. <laughs> Yo, this is like a perfect Halloween episode Because this is so freaking scary, man And this is not a kid's show This is not a kid's show, bro God damn But yeah, they introduced bloodbending to the I mean, bloodbending is cool and all But You know, ever since book 2 They introduced so many different little um, Alright There's the four main bending, right? Water, earth, fire, and air From that, we've got For earth We've gotten metal bending. Fire, we've gotten um, like subcategories of the bending, right? We've gotten lightning, which we learned from Azula and I think Uncle Iroh. I can't remember if Uncle Iroh can do lightning or not. Or, well, Uncle Iroh did the redirection of the lightning. Of the lightning. So he's, he's able to control the lightning and shoot it out for someone else if someone shoots it at him. So we learned that. Now water bending, we got blood bending for air. Oh my god, I don't know if they're gonna introduce anything this show, but there's some crazy shit they can do with air. Because if they if they can use the human body, right, with blood bending, because we're made up of water, we're made up of blood everywhere in our whole body, able to control all the muscles and the veins and everything, like she said. Yo, what if... <laughs> oh my god. Like, we breathe oxygen all the time, right? What if you can choke a dude down by controlling the oxygen within their body? Oh my god, that'd be so freaking... Oh. Well, I'm not even gonna think about it. That's just crazy. That, oh, that's just so weird. But yeah, there's like so many different categories. We even saw... Um, Subcategories, I mean, we even saw, uh, uh, shit, shit, the, the Earth Avatar, Kyoji, she did lava bending, I think we saw Roku do it also, in like, in, way back in book one, like episode eight or something, do the lava bending, or magma bending, whatever you want to call it, whatever it is, but yeah, there's so many different subcategories, so I guess that you could do a lot of different things with bending, but I don't think anybody that's a bender can learn it. Like, you got to be skilled in it. You know, like Hama, she's a skilled waterbender. She learned this technique somehow. I guess just by trying it, which makes sense. Why wouldn't you want to try it? And just like Toph, she, you know, when she was locked in the cage, the metal box that she was in, she, she was just trying. And then all of a sudden, she started seeing the little particles of earth within the metal itself. And that's what she was able to bend. It's not because she was bending metal. She's just sensing the earth. Within the metal. So yeah man. I, damn. I wonder what other subcategories of bending there is. I mean the air thing could be crazy. You know. Choking somebody out. Doing like a Star Wars. Doing like, choking someone. Controlling their windpipe or something. Oh. Oh my. Yo that would be so scary. <laughs> that would be so scary. I don't even know what the hell I would do. But damn. Um. Anyways, guys, absolutely crazy episode, an amazing episode. One, this easily one of my favorite episodes. I love scary horror, 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 horror types of things, and 
this is just right up my alley, man. This is so freaking, this beautiful storytelling, also. The music was amazing. A little creepy music. A little same two or three notes in the beginning of the episode when they were telling the scary story and then Hama shows up. Um, during the campfire that they were at, also the lighting of their faces to show that they're in the darkness, but also being lit by the fire to still show their features. That was cool, cool as well. And also the voices are changing, right? I don't know if it's just me or me noticing, or maybe they're not changing. But I, I swear, Aang's voice is a little different now, which would make sense because if we, if they stayed with the same voice actor all the way from book one. You know, they're going through puberty, bro. So their voices are changing. I'm pretty sure his voice is changing unless it's just me picking up something else. But I'm pretty sure Aang's voice is getting older now. Which which makes sense. Because Aang in book one is only 12. And now he's going to 13 now. So he he's hitting that puberty stage. But anyways, man. Such an amazing episode. <laughs> Absolutely shocking. Um... Let me know what you guys thought about it in the comment section. Let's talk Avatar, man. Let's talk about what other sub subcategories of bending they could have. Because, I mean, I can't even think of anything else. What else could they do with water? Yo, what if what if with water, right? You know, because we're made up of water. What if you take out the moisture of the skin out? <laughs> you know, just dry it. Dry a person out just like a mummy. Mummify someone. Like, oh my God, that'd be so... That'd be so weird, but... Damn, it could be possible. What if you suck the moisture out of someone's skin, right? Right? And you know, you mummify their body pretty much and kill them that way. No. Yo, man, this is just this is just too dark. All right, let's let's stop this shit now. <laughs> Anyways, hopefully you guys enjoyed the reaction and the discussion part of this episode. Um, make sure to comment, subscribe, like, and share, please. Always comment, cause comments, comments and likes. Help the video so much to push it out to other people. So please, even if you just put like, hi, or hey, thank you for the reaction. That's all that matters. Please, do it for your boy. Anyways, see you guys next time, man. Episode 9 of Avatar Last Airbender. Oh, shit, this show is getting crazy.